Six, Wick News has uncovered shocking information about Florida's medical marijuana laws. What you think you know is wrong. Our investigation finds that medical marijuana has been legal in Florida for 23 years, yet no one seems to know about it. Wick News investigative reporter Ryan Kruger joins us live with how this is possible. Well, Lois and Chris, these pieces of paper changed Florida law dramatically two decades ago, yet you've probably never heard of it. In 1991, a district court of appeals in the Panhandle decided medical marijuana is legal in Florida. Forget what you think you know. Medical marijuana is perfectly legal in Florida for some people. The state of Florida has allowed uh, medical marijuana use on a limited basis since 1991. Chris Ralph is the legal administrator for Health Law Services, a Jacksonville law firm that specializes in medical necessity cases. He says his firm has close to 100 clients that have established medical necessity. As we reach out to law enforcement officials, most of them are very surprised that this law even exists. In 1991, the Florida First District Court of Appeals established what could be the first doctrine in the country to allow medical marijuana. But you've likely never heard of it. The case was Jinx versus the state of Florida. Kenneth and Barbara Jinx were suffering from AIDS and treating their disease with cannabis. But they were later charged with growing the illegal drug. The court ruled that patients suffering from debilitating diseases have the right to consume, possess, and cultivate marijuana, provided they can establish that they have a legal medical necessity. It defined medical necessity as the lesser of two evils. If there isn't a safer alternative, and if the evil they're trying to avoid is more heinous than the use of marijuana, and they're legally allowed to use it. Anybody who has a who has to take a medication that can cause death really has an absolute defense from any prosecution because they are using the le the least harmful alternative to treat their conditions. In other words, if a doctor has diagnosed you with a debilitating condition and the only treatments available for that condition can cause more harm than marijuana, then by law you can claim medical necessity. This is a fraud. He says the wording in Amendment 2 paves the way for widespread abuse. If you want to pass it for those debilitating medical conditions, no problem. But don't tell people it's going to be for debilitating medical conditions, and then they find out that, well, actually, you can use it for any medical condition, anything, headaches, backaches, tennis elbow. The sheriff says marijuana is already legal in the Sunshine State for those with medical necessity. We already have medical marijuana here in this state. We have a Florida statute that allows for medical necessity. So that is why there are several individuals already that have used marijuana or have been caught with marijuana, et cetera, and they had a recommendation from their doctor. We don't need Amendment 2 for the, quote, medical marijuana. We already have it. We already have a Florida statute in place that protects those individuals, and there's also medications that they're working on right now for these different illnesses, and you can find them on clinicaltrials.gov. And anyone, you know, from our, our camp or anyone that I know would be more than happy to help those families get those medications that they truly need. Boy, we have heard from so many parents passionate about pushing for the legalization of medical marijuana in Florida. First Coast News' Keith Nelson has a story of one First Coast mom who says medical marijuana is the key to helping end her daughter's suffering. A mother's touch, a simple kiss, and a complicated solution. We want medical marijuana for her. There's really nothing left other than new medicines that are coming out every day, um, but the side effects are pretty horrific. With not even a decade behind her, little Christina has undergone three brain surgeries, taken 16 different medications, and traveled to three countries for stem cell treatment. Born with epilepsy, seizures, uncontrollable, have become a constant in her life. It's very difficult to watch. Tired of watching her child suffer, Clark is making a bold move, suppressing her fears, ready to provide Christina with a drug now embroiled in a controversial fight in state. They don't have to suffer. Their children do not have to suffer. Christopher Ralph, a legal administrator for Health Law Services in Jacksonville for the past six months, has reached out to law enforcement agencies, spreading the word about the Florida doctrine of medical necessity. Florida's case law says that you have to, if you have a condition that you're suffering from, and this is the medication that's least harmful to you and it's effective, this is what will work.
Uh, my name is Ian Christensen. I'm an attorney with Health Law Services. Um, I specialize in healthcare compliance um, and medical marijuana laws in the state of Florida. I'm with Health Law Services, a law firm in Jacksonville, Florida, that uh, works to uh, establish a patient's right currently, as you're aware, under the medical necessity doctrine. Hi, I'm Mariah, and my daughter Dahlia was diagnosed with a very aggressive form of brain cancer last May. So this has only been a year-long journey for me at this point. I put her on the ketogenic diet because, as we all know, sugar feeds cancer. St. Jude took her off of that and said absolutely no dietary restrictions for pediatric oncology patients. The first week we were there, after taking her off of that diet, she stopped breathing. and almost died. She did die, technically, but she was resuscitated several times. She went in for another emergency surgery, and I knew with surgery, radiation, and chemo being my only options, knowing that those don't work very well at all for brain cancer, especially aggressive brain cancers, I just started researching anything I could get my hands on. You're not biased at this point. You're trying to save your two-year-old daughter's life. So I found graviola. Parts of that plant are neurotoxic. I found hundreds, thousands, I'm sure, of different options. The only one that was effective and safe was cannabis. Time and time again, the doctors at St. Jude told me there's just not enough research. But what I found is the research is there. Every study done on every cancer cell line, in vitro and in vivo shows, cannabis extract kills cancer. So with that being said, even if it just treated her nausea, her vomiting, her loss of appetite, even if it just offset the need for a feeding tube, even if it just made her feel better, wouldn't that be enough? Uh, so, right. So I started her on imported oil in November and saw immediate improvement. Uh, we know that CBD repairs brain damage and several different types of damage to the brain. Um, her neurological development, she slept through the night, she was hungry, they no longer threatened her with the feeding tube. We ended up being able to leave St. Jude with the agreement that we would do chemo in home so that we could go to Colorado. After several months in Colorado being isolated in a house, it was snowing outside in May and my daughter's hypothermic. She cannot leave that house. We have no family or friends there. Um, with all of the research that we've done and knowing that case law precedence was already set in Florida, knowing that the medical necessity doctrine was already established here, we came back because we were being bullied. And we got with Chris Ralph and Ian Christensen of Health Law Services and said, you guys already know that this exists. We know that this exists. Why are we still being bullied? So we're back, we're not being bullied, we're here, we're using it. And the truth of the matter is, this is big business, this is money, this is investments. But at the end of the day, this is lives. This is about nothing more than human suffering, compassion, and saving lives. I really appreciate every single person who's gonna be heading this up for our state because we start in our own backyard. Thank you.